Management, Management Group Corp. and Coveo, I want to thank you for joining us today for a webcast on the topic of building customers for life. Each month we will have a webcast covering a different aspect of this critical topic and we hope you can join us for the whole series. My name is Bill Bradley. I'm Director of Marketing for Omega. I'll be moderating today's webcast. Omega helps organizations drive revenue and profits by improving customer satisfaction and loyalty through the implementation of a customer experience management strategy, CEM. Omega is proud to have Coveo co-sponsoring this webcast today. Coveo solutions transform companies' ability to gain insight from diverse and overwhelming amounts of unstructured and structured data wherever it may reside. I'm pleased to introduce our distinguished group of presenters today who will, be, who will talk about how their companies are working to build customers for life. Kurt Hill is Vice President, Technical Support Services with Cisco Systems. Jim Bampos is Vice President, Customer Quality, EMC. Karen D. Lim, Vice President, Worldwide Software Support with Pitney Bowes. Ed Shepardson, Senior Vice President, Enterprise Solutions with Coveo. And Sam Kleidman, Vice President, Service Strategies Practice, Anthony and Alexander Group. Now besides the individual presentations, all speakers will respond to two questions in a panel format. In addition, there will be three poll questions where you can weigh in on topics related to this webcast. The results will be displayed in real time for immediate feedback. Now you may submit questions to the speakers at any time using the control panel shown on your screen. If you can't see this control panel now, click on the red arrow and the webinar ribbon located on your screen. The webcast will conclude with the speakers responding to your submitted questions. I'll mention that this webcast is being recorded and a link with the full audio and slides will be sent to everyone who registered. Finally, Omega will send all attendees a, a CEM Playbook Strategy Toolkit. This is a thumb drive containing a host of resources to help your organizations build customers for life. So I thought we'd start um, with a, a panel question uh, to get you all thinking about where you're organization is in building customers for life in your own own uh, company. So just let me launch this question and uh, we'll be all set to start. Okay, the question is, how would you rate the overall customer experience that your company currently delivers? Better than all companies in any, in this, in any industry? Best in your industry? Above average in your industry? I'm sorry, above average in your industry, average in your industry, or below average in your industry? Okay, and we'll give this just a few more seconds. Thanks for spending time. We'll give another couple seconds for things to, uh, to pan out. We'll get in some responses. Okay, 80% of you have voted. Any more? Please make your selection quickly. It looks like we've heard from just about everybody. And as we see, 58% of you feel that you're above average in your industry, followed by 29% average in your industry. That's fairly representative and um, interesting feedback. So thank you very much for that information. Yeah, I think now I would like to um, um, in introduce our first presenter, Sam Kleidman, who will outline the CEM playbook strategy to help establish the proper context for our discussion today. Sam, take it away. Thank you, Bill. Hello, everybody. So we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the CEM DNA playbook strategy. And the first slide here shows us why do we have a, a strategy. Uh, and clearly, the goal of this kind of a process is to increase revenue and profits for the business. Because otherwise, it's kind of a hobby. So how do you do that? And that's what we're going to go through today. I think it's important to talk about the fact that when you launch the creation of a formal strategy, it's not a journey. A journey is something where you have a distinct starting point, distinct ending point, and that's it. This is an ongoing process. It's another version of continuous improvement. And it just it keeps going. Uh, and it's important to do it right. And the way we look at things is that 
we're going to make our profits and our revenue by going through four phases of a relationship with our customers. The first phase is the
I just want to double check the audio. Hello? Yeah, this is Kurt Hill. I'm not hearing the other panelists, so my apologies. This is Tim. Welcome to Go to Webinar. Web events may be the integral access code followed by the pound or hash line. Hi, this is Kurt Hill rejoining. Kurt, this is Jim. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I don't hear anybody else, so. No, I don't either. And I've uh, jumped yeah, in and out a couple of times here. It's Ed here. I, I got booted out and I just came back in uh, as well. Uh, it sounds like we've been cut off from the rest. I'm on as well, but I can't hear anything else. Okay. So all the pallets are on the other uh, our own bridge, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love technology. Okay. So, so just so to know everybody can hear us. Okay, no worries. Hello, uh, this is Bill Bradley, the moderator. Um, I don't know, I just uh, had to redial to enter the webcast. I don't know if that makes any difference on the audio. I am hearing something. Hi, Bill, this is Jim, I hear you. All right. Um, do you see your, your slide on the screen, Jim? Do you want to uh, just start? Sure. So I'm Jim Bampas from uh, um, EMC. Um, what I'd like to do is go through with you today a little bit about the definition of our total customer experience program, what that entails, and uh, give you a little insight into what are the critical parts of what's next for our program. You advance the slide. So basically EMC is in, is in the transformation in attempting to transform the entire IT industry. The, the main goal here is to transform IT organizations by moving uh, um, sort of the technology to cloud and big data. And one of the challenges we have inside of EMC is also transforming our programs and ourselves as we transform our customers. And transforming the approach to total customer experience really takes on a couple of key attributes. One is certainly continue to differentiate EMC from the competition as technology products become commoditized and services become more complex. Uh, at EMC, one of the key uh, values that we try to expand upon is our products and our technology. One of the goals we're trying to attempt here is to really expand our total customer experience beyond the products and then really engage our employees, customers, and partners. Uh, EMC is embarking on a new customer-focused data-driven strategy really to help define the requirements both within the stakeholders of the company, but also within our customer base. And also, um, one of the important things is to create this sustainable, repeatable metric system whereby we can measure success 
um, within EMC uh, according to our customers and then I'll also help our customers obtain that same level of success and measure that. And finally, built-in accountability of business. This really means to ensure that the data that we provide internally to EMC stakeholders is actionable and that it is validated by our customers. And I'll give you a little approach on the next slide here of what that might look like. So in a traditional sense, when our customers go through an engagement with us or a long-term engagement, it really has four parts to it, much like when you buy a car. There's the buying process, there's the deployment to ensure our technology is implemented properly in a production environment, there's the product, and then there's the servicing process. And we recognize that the total customer experience importance is how our customers value each one of those stages and the interactions between them with the goal of, of course, continuing to build um, loyal customers for life and, and measured by the success of EMC and our customer base. The way we go about this is we've created different tracks within the total customer experience program. The first bar here underneath the customer journey map is really about how we measure the relationship. We are an NPS company. We do use NPS to look at how our customers respond to us, and we look at things like share of wallet and total value that EMC provides its customers. And then we move to an event-driven customer experience transaction-based program where we actually, when the buying process is complete, we ensure that we get feedback from our customers on how successful we were in the buying process and so on throughout the customer journey map. We also do something called voice of the field, which really has two objectives. One is to ensure or interview our field personnel defined by the people that touch our customer on a regular basis to determine whether or not EMC is in fact enabling them to, to deliver a better total customer experience to their customers. And the second part of it is to interview the field to, to get their opinions on how their customers are feeling about EMC delivering a total customer experience and continuing to prove. And then we also look at many, many different product quality metrics, um, things like system availability, performance, scalability, et cetera. And then we've taken that same model and we look across each of the four areas of the customer journey map and we've created customer KPIs. So for example, in the deployment process, how well do we finish an engagement on budget on time from the customer's perspective? And by the way, that's the customer budget and customer time frame. In servicing, it would be things like response time, total time to resolution. Those are metrics that are directly impactful to the customer, and that's the important part aspect of this. And finally, um, we've built what we call a unified analytics platform. That is on EMC technology called Green Plum Data Warehouse. And what we've incorporated is SaaS analytics company and SAP business object to allow our businesses to have full access to the data warehouse that's built on all those gray bars you see above to ensure that organizations across EMC have full access to those metrics and are able to run a set of analytics which may be pertinent to their areas of the business. I'll take you to the next slide which gives you kind of an overview of the value of this unified analytics platform. And really what we're doing is we're transforming and enabling total customer and total partner experience to ensure that the quality of decision making and insight is, is really turned into actions and measurable outcomes, both measurable in, in EMC continuing to improve its total customer experience program, but also measured by the success from a customer viewpoint. And on the left-hand side, in that triangle, it's really a recap of the previous slide with one addition, financials. So how do we measure ourselves as, as a public company? Obviously, revenue and profit, market share. These are critical attributes. And as we enable unified analytics platform and we become more sophisticated in the intelligence we deliver, not only internally but also to our customers, is we really standardize reporting to ensure we're watching trends we're continuing to, to address impact, impactful attributes to create better success with our customers and to enable our customers to be more successful. And as we move sort of up the stack in the Unified Analytics platform, it's really about becoming proactive in managing customer experience and not sort of looking in the rearview mirror. So how do we become better predictive in, in not only measuring but acting upon it's a lower risk and drive better customer impact. 
So that's kind of an overview of how the Total Customer Experience Program works at EMC and what the future looks like based on unified analytics. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Kurt Hill, I think we may have missed your presentation because of audio problems. No worries. I'm back on. Happy to go back or go forward to you prefer. Yeah, let me, let me get back to your slides. I apologize, everybody, for no that. No worries. That was actually uh, my Karen, strategy. Uh, uh, your patients will get right to you, but uh, we certainly want everyone to have a chance. Kurt, uh, you're all teed up. Thank you uh, for your presentation. Uh, thank you. That was my strategy, actually, because following, uh, following Sam was a tough act, and Jim was better equipped to do it than I, so I'm in a better position <laughs> now anyway. So, um, so I appreciate, appreciate it. Can I just go to the first slide? I'll be quick here. And, and I, I know uh, uh, Sam had noted kind of the strategy for having um, CMEM, which I think is really a premise for all of us to follow. And then I know that, um, that uh, Jim just noted some of the metrics. And let me kind of play off the metrics discussion. From a Cisco perspective, you know, customer listening, has played a huge role in the overall company corporate strategy. And really looking to be the best in the class and in the world is, a, is a, a goal, I think, for all of us. And if you look at your first poll question, we all kind of think we're in the middle there, which I agree with um, from a holistic standpoint. And when we hire, um, we look at our search firms, and we survey thousands of Cisco customers worldwide to tell us what, they're, what we're doing well and what we need to do to accommodate their business and how we can improve that. So customers really drive our company, and that's probably the bottom premise that you need to walk away from, is that customers drive our company, and we can never be too close to a customer or listening too much. And I actually have talked to other companies in the industry that feel like they pull their customers too much, and I really think that that's a dangerous uh, vein to start thinking about. It's through our customers that, that um, the market transitions are identified and captured, that success is measured, and for you know whom the solutions we design are created for. So with that approach, we combine that with our culture, and that's what really starts to truly make a best-in-class CEM process, I think. So if you go to the next slide here, I'll, uh, I'll wrap up quickly. Uh, so looking at that, if, uh, and this is kind of my patch where I deal with, this is really a services-specific view, and there's pieces of the customer listening that are in my bucket, and um, they work specifically around listening um, to customers specifically on services as a whole. So the voice of the customer is extremely important to us. And we, we have a department, I have actually a whole dedicated department on the voice of the customer within services um, as a liaison between the businesses and our vendors that, that gather the information, our survey vendors. And this really helps us understand both the customer and the business needs, which ensures that they maintain a real holistic view of the customer experiences and can help drive improvements through that appropriate business unit. Um, from uh, just a standpoint, giving an idea, our team conducts over about 40,000 surveys per year, and they really fall in a couple of areas. Um, uh, experiences, that's really our survey uh, that, that really determines customer sat. And by the way, every individual at Cisco, um, part of their measurement and their rewards and recognition is hinged on that number. So everybody's tied to it very closely. In addition, we have transactional surveys on um, all the interactions we have. And then we have actually surveys dedicated to um, looking at how we interact on the web, how we interact in person, how we interact in the accounting. So we look at all facets of the business. And really what that's doing for us, it's creating new capabilities and increasing our speed of execution for critical information as part of our strategy to improve the customer experience. Um, we've even stepped into um, segmenting, segmenting the voice of the, the customer channels uh, for, um, for priorities and program results. Uh, we look at all those surveys to make sure that we're scalable and uh, manageable in those. And then if you look at the new areas that start to touch in, we look at added capabilities around text analytics, um, social sentiment, uh, customer surveys, et cetera, in that space. And so the whole part uh, and, and, and parcel in this point is about facing the customer, making sure we understand our stakeholders, and understanding their business practices and using our capabilities to listen and then integrate uh, that back into our process to make changes in the strategy for Cisco perspective. So um, I'll, I'll be quick and wrap it up at that point. And if we have any questions, I'd certainly address them that way. All right. Thank you very much, Kurt. Karen, let's get right to your, uh, your presentation. Bear with me while I just advance. So thank you, Bill. While you're teeing that up, I'll just um, say to everyone, I feel that um, you know, we're earlier in the journey than the previous presentations that you've heard, which is sometimes a good thing to take a, a broad look at what you're doing in the organization to see if it's working or not working. And as, 
Sam said, this is a continuous improvement type effort that you really have to do to make sure that you are building customers for life. And it, it's not an easy thing in, in large organizations, business to business, business to consumer or otherwise, it really isn't an easy thing. I'm talking about it from a perspective of business to business and to be both um, broadly, we have had a number of programs, but the biggest challenge that we had, and um, if we actually could go to the next slide, the biggest challenge we had as, a, as an organization was really having that outside in view of the customer. And what we were finding that in pockets we were having success in our programs, but we were not having something that was consistent and repeatable. And what we were not finding is that we weren't driving that relationship closer to our customers. And when we looked at it uh, in the cold light of day, what we actually realized was that we, we just did not have that customer engagement. And we really lacked a, um, a solid strategy around the involvement of customers and that validation. So we've just embarked, and this is pretty new for us, we've just embarked on a different um, uh, strategy around how we are doing that now and feel that it's really working for us. It's, it's been in play for a while. and we're really starting to get some kind of success through it. So this was key and fundamental to what we are now doing within our organization. So on this slide here, we have something called enabling lifetime customer relationships, which, oh, sorry, we skipped too fast. <laughs> yeah, stay on that slide. Um, enabling lifetime customer relationships is very much like um, Jim's uh, buying, deploy, it's our customer life cycle. One of the challenges that we had was uh, our silos. They, across the business, having that silos that were very much driven by their own agendas and incentives and programs. And even though um, our net promoter, uh, we, we've used net promoter and have used it for a number of years, uh, is um, everyone's incentivized by, um, by those metrics. That, that still was not driving this cross-silo um, collaboration or focus on our customers, and we were just not getting departments to understand uh, what it meant to be in our customer's shoes. And so a lot of our model that we put in place, and this enabling lifetime customers, we call this our racetrack. And our racetrack through each, uh, although I don't speak to them all here, it's early days for us, but each phase of the acquiring the customer, converting the customer, serving the customer, right through to reconnecting with the customers involves either our marketing or our sales or our service department. And we find that it is driving a closer collaboration and handover between the different different departments and organizations. And when we started to look at the initiatives that we were doing, we were, we're finding now that a lot of the initiatives we're driving and a lot of the um, results that we're looking for are cross-functional, cross-collaboration and um, we're, we're getting far more success out of the programs that we're doing now than we did before. And it, it, on the next slide here uh, are some of the metrics that we started to look at, and this is in our service organization, but this overspills into, um, well, like I said, the sales and the marketing. So our customer outcome metrics were, was our first step to try and get organization or functional areas to think about what it is to be in the customer's shoes. How What's the pain point and how, how are we going to impact? And this seems very uh, rudimentary and you would think that this wouldn't be necessary, but we actually found that it was. And we found by doing this, it really drove a different type of focus in the group. So one of the uh, things that we did in particular, just as an example of some of our metrics that we have here, is that we started looking at um, the support organization, the engineering, and the um, product management group. And what we used to find before is they were very independent in how they would um, drive their success factors. So engineering would pat themselves on the back when uh, a release date was met and the product management were, were happy, the product went out in time, and uh, support then would have to face calls or not calls depending on what happened with, with the product. And so what we did was we started to look at adoption. We're just starting to drive this metric, and we're playing about with a few things. But we started to drive adoption as a focus point for, um, for these three groups. So instead of looking at the individual um, agendas or metrics, they're collaborating together in the success of that product being um, 
adopted by the customers, and that's been a pretty successful focus for those groups. So those are some of the things that we're doing in our racetrack strategy and looking at these customer outcome metrics. Um, there's a lot more behind these four top-level metrics, like driving customer lifetime value. Um, there's a lot more behind those things than, than here on the screen. But like I said, I am, I'm happy to answer any questions. It's not um, very easy to go through details in a short time. We've had a huge amount of success on the program so far. Um, and just over the past year, we have seen a significant shift in our net promoter scores. And the biggest thing that we feel has happened is the collaboration across the functional areas. We feel now that um, the customer engagement model is not in one department, and it's not driven by a small group, but it's actually something that the company is starting to get their heads around. So that's where we are today in our program, and it's pretty new and fresh, but we are um, certainly forging our way ahead with it. So thank you, Bill, and I'll hand back over to you. Thank you, Karen. That's a great program you have. Uh, we're ready to uh, move on to our third and final poll question uh, right now, and we're actually going to switch from the CEM uh, strategy and process uh, initiatives that our three speakers have just spoken about and take a look at uh, the use of automated tools and technology that serves as the foundation for building customers for life and CEM initiatives. Sam touched on some of this in his presentation. So uh, the next uh, survey question is literally, how many systems does your support center use to resolve customer problems? And here we're going to open it up to every kind of system that you might have, CRM, ERP, uh, PLM, knowledge bases, file shares, email, telephony, chat, social media, what have you. So the choices are between one and five of these systems, between five and 10, 10 to 15, or more than 15. So let's go ahead and ask people to weigh in. I see responses are coming in already. This is a easy choices to make, so let's see where we go. About halfway through people's responses, please take a moment to make your selection. Okay, I think we'll cap it here. And um, what we're seeing, the first two, uh, between five, one and five and five and ten, is where the majority of you fall. Uh, and 17% uh, still a pretty good number of 10 to 15 different systems that they rely on. And uh, I think of you uh, have even more of those disparate data resources and applications and services that, that you use. Uh, so that, that's an interesting uh, segue, I think, as we introduce Ed Shepherdson of Coveo, who's going to talk about uh, enterprise feedback management. Take it away, Ed. All right, thank you, Bill, and, uh, and thanks to uh, the uh, the other guest speakers. Um, you've probably heard, uh, you know, as my colleagues, uh, you know, talked about their their CEM strategies and uh, you know leveraging uh, you know the information that they had. That uh, you know measuring and analyzing and, and taking action on this information was very important to them. And uh, if uh, if you just go to the next slide, there, Bill, that would be great. Um, so what do you uh, you know so so all of this activity that 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 is around trying to understand your customer uh, you know comes from a, a bunch of systems and you know what we've seen is that uh, you know this information in most uh, environments in most organizations uh, you know is very fragmented and and it's becoming overwhelmed with uh, you know new social tools and new social data being uh, collected and uh, you know it's really you know adding to uh, the diversity that already exists in the IT environment. And what we're finding is that it's uh, you know as people are looking for more and more information uh, to, to you know bring together to have that conversation with the, their customers from end to end, uh, it's become a, a bit more of a, a challenge. And uh, so if if we go to the next slide and uh, you know I'll talk about uh, you know just some of the uh, we we surveyed uh, you know over 300 uh, you know customer service executives who have responsibility for you know various uh, aspects of uh, you know the, the customer experience. And uh, we, we found that uh, a large majority of them, 25 or, or you know, 25 percent of them only, had access to the, the felt they had access to the information that uh, uh, they really needed to be able to understand their customers completely. 
And of that, 84% uh, of them, and this was interesting, 84% of them, you know, said that one of the real challenges that they were facing is that, uh, you know, a, a majority of this data coming in is, is unstructured data. It's data that's collected in, uh, you know, uh, customer communities, in, uh, you know, survey uh, details, in uh, emails, and chat logs, and all these, these different types of things. So it's no longer that, just that structured environment that's uh, at play here. It's really about the whole uh, ecosystem. Unstructured. So we asked the question, well, so how many of you have started on projects to try and bring together all of this information? And, um, you know, they, they uh, you know, come back and basically said, you know, well, uh, you know, we've all started it. And I think this kind of uh, you know, follows along with some of the survey questions we had here. Uh, but we're finding challenges. And, uh, you know, so if we walk into the, to the next slide here, oops, okay. That, so if we walk to the next slide here, um, you know, we'll we'll see that uh, you know what are what is the opportunity here, and what's the cost of not you know having access to this information? And I think we've come through a period of time with uh, you know again the proliferation of solutions and the in the growth in the in the volume of our, our uh, and variety of the data that we're collecting is that, that you know if you don't have access uh, you know to the to the to perspective relevant information across all of these different systems, you know it's really hard to you'll know, have that end-to-end -end conversation with your customer. Uh, you know, Karen talked about the, the racetrack, and, and uh, you know, Jim talked about you know, the, the, the customer uh, journey map. And those are about uh, you know, linking together information from all of these various systems and, and bringing it together. Now, if you don't have access to that, uh, you know, you're, it, it's hard for your customer service organization to be very efficient. Uh, you know, when I have to ask the customer to, to go on hold or to wait, or I have to transfer, I have to escalate, I have to do, uh, you know, pass it to somebody else who has this information, or I have to swivel to another act, uh, another system to get access to that. Those all create inefficiencies, and and today's customers are demanding that uh, when you they ask a question, they want to get the answer. You know, so so you know, what is this business transformation? If we look at the next slide, uh, you know, it, it's really the way that Caveo looks at it is that uh, you know we want to take uh, this information from all of these different systems. Uh, the the enterprise uh, content, uh, you know, your 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 social channels, uh, and bring this all together. So that includes your knowledge bases, your CRM systems, your ERPs, uh, email, internet, um, you know, all these different systems, and, and and using our unified index and technology, bring them together. And and what we do on top of this uh, this you know this uh, information as we bring it together is that we we really enrich the um, uh, the the value of the data. So we've collected this data in all these stove pipe, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, systems, and what we're now doing is, is really enhancing that. And we're using things like text analytics to to really harvest knowledge out of the unstructured data that is part of these uh, these systems, and really you know generating additional themes and different and additional context that links this unstructured data to pieces of your structure. Uh, you know, a product name that was mentioned in an email can be linked to uh, you know, your definition of a product and so forth. The final uh, you know, part of this is, is uh, you know, okay, it's great to have all this information about your products, your customers, and all this stuff in, in, an inter in a, uh, um, a repository like a unified index, uh, but really the, the real value is now, you know, mashing this information up and, and joining the, the dots between uh, the different pieces of information and putting it in the hands of the user, and really putting it in the hands of the user is where a tremendous amount of value comes from. Allows them to search, allows them to take a, a, you know, a like information and consolidate it down to, to the most relevant pieces. Allows us to correlate information from one system that's physically unlinked to another system, but through data we can link those systems together and make that information valuable. And like uh, you know, and, and uh, Jim you know, talked a lot about uh, you know, the value of, it, of analytics and being able to understand and see and, and predict what might happen uh, you know, taking all this information and, and, and running it through some analytics, you know, puts this information at your fingertips. And on the next screen, you know, it's, it's really, you know, so we say why, you know, why are we doing this? So why, why bring all this information together? Uh, you know, one is for, for the access, but really when we look at what Insight is, Insight is the ability to, to drive, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the ability 
to uh, access knowledge and, and really find out what's the next best action. And, and, and uh, you know, I think all of our all of my uh, you know, predecessors in, 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 in their discussions talked about the end-to-end -end conversation with your customer. You know, whether it's the buying, it's the buying, it's using, it's uh, servicing, you need to understand and see this all uh, from, from one perspective. And so if I just have data from all of these siloed systems and I look at it in the context of that, that data and that information, it really doesn't mean a whole lot to me. But if I can link that data to the people who, who have the, the knowledge or the ability to leverage that information, it now allows them to make decisions based on that and to turn it into knowledge. And so having all of this information really allows Soveo to help organizations find and link all the key information from their ecosystem and, and match it up and identify who are the key people that can answer the questions or help me as an agent or as a sales rep or whoever I am in my organization, who can help me answer this question? And uh, you know, let's uh, go to the next slide, please. So some of the things that you know can be uh, you know can be answered uh, by by having this information available to you is uh, you know again you know having this 360 view of your customer, being able to have that end-to-end -end conversation, being able to answer the the, the unknown questions. The, the challenge we have today. Uh, for so many of us is that you know when a customer calls us, you know we don't know what question they're going to ask us, all right, and we have to go and, and and find that information. So the ability to you know when I get a question is be able to relate it to other customers that might have had the same situation or other uh, sales that I might have done in that same area. I want to be able to recommend the uh, people that bought this product also bought this product. I want to be able to look and say, well, people are complaining about this. I looked at my social uh, you know, channel and I'm seeing similar situations. Uh, I'm harvesting all of that information and feeding that back into uh, to R&D to, uh, you know, to be able to enhance the product to fill some of these gaps. All of this, uh, this information is about uh, you know, managing uh, you know, that experience. And, and so you know, being able to bring this together uh, you know, is very important. Being able to put it at the fingertips of your your uh, your your users and your customers to uh, make decisions very quickly is very very important. And if we just go to the to the to the last slide here, I'll just wrap up with you know a few examples of of businesses that we've transformed uh, by bringing this uh, this information together. And I, and I think you're all aware that uh, you know the more uh, information that's integrated. Uh, and, and uh, consumed uh, by your, your uh, you know, all of your employees, your staff, your, your customers, uh, you know, brings valuable value to your organization. That collective knowledge of your organization is very important. So at uh, you know, CA Technologies, uh, you know, we brought together uh, you know, uh, 74 different systems into a, a single unified index and was able to, uh, on their self-service, as an example, on their self-service site, we're able to, uh, you know, recognize a 10% increase in customer satisfaction just coming through self-service, and this is all just using data that they already had. Uh, Natiza, that's a, uh, uh, you know, a large uh, data warehouse uh, appliance manufacturer, uh, you know, basically in 90 days saw 67% uh, improvement in their ability to identify known issues, and then what that resulted in, what that allowed for, is that they didn't have. Uh, they, they reduced the number of issues that they reported on to R&D by 50%. And so that was a great savings on two sides. One, they were able to answer their customers faster. The second part of it was they weren't overtaxing their R&D department because of all of this extra work. So, and uh, yeah, and so I'll, I'll leave it at that. And um, you know, I, I just you know ask yourself, you know, uh, you know, what could you do if you had actionable insight into all of the questions that you get asked every day? All right, I'll hand great it back to uh, Bill. for that uh, great presentation. Uh, this brings us now to our first panel question that all of our speakers will be uh, have an opportunity to uh, to respond to. First one, what are the business objectives of your CEM building customers for life strategy and what have been some of the measurable results of your program? Uh, Jim, why don't we start with you? Sure. I think um, before we look at the business objectives of the CEM strategy, I think what we've learned in the last uh, several years is that there are really three voices that are, are really driving the business, if you will. The, the voice of the business, so um, what is the strategy and goals of the business? The voice of the market um, in terms of what does the marketplace look like? What does your competition look like? 
um, how much innovation is required in terms of your marketplace, and then finally the voice of the customer. And I think um, you know what we've done is we've looked at the business objectives around each of those areas and how CEM strategy applies to that. So if you look at how customer experience may help um, sort of change or modify the voice of the business and the voice of the market, I think that's where our strategy has actually um, morphed into instead of just a separate CEM strategy. And I think the, some of the measurable results of the program, I think we've seen some very solid improvements in certain areas of our business. Um, we have measured market share in those areas of the business and revenue. I think in, in, in terms of how we measure customer experience continuing to improve, we've seen the results of the voice of the business, the voice of the market, and, and actually the company improve right along with it. Great. Uh, Kurt or Karen, do you have uh, any yeah, comments on this question? Uh, sure, I'll let Karen go if she'd like first. Thanks for that, Kurt. Um, so yeah, we um, are very much the same as what Jim was saying. This particular phase that we're in is earlier, as I said, in the cycle. But we do uh, look at the, the market and tie it with our strategy in terms of where we're going as a company. Sydney Bowles has really been reinventing themselves over the last couple of years and moving away, or not moving away, that might come out wrong, but uh, transforming themselves into uh, really a technology company of the future. And through that transition, we really have had to address how we handle and work with our customers. And so gaining that deep customer insight has been the primary focus for us. How do we manage to establish that close connection with our customers that builds those deeper relationships uh, with these large enterprise uh, type of customers? And then really make sure that we're driving that into our business for um, you know, improved uh, shareholder value and, and that type of thing. So it, it, it is very much uh, from a top level down approach of how we um, feed this into our organization. Great. Thank you. Kurt? Yeah, so, so I actually agree with the comments uh, before me, but I'll tell you, uh, from, from a CEM discussion, you know, I, I don't think CEM is actually a strategy for a company. It should be the culture. And the reason I say that is because, you know, we all need our customers to, to stay in business. And I think, um, I think the, the impetus is to figure out how do we make ourselves two things. Um, we raise our, our value proposition to our customers, and we raise our ease of doing business. And those are the two things I think that a CEM strategy process program should be giving a company as it as it um, sets up its strategy moving forward. Because again, if you can't do those two things, you're kind of a, you're in a position to give the business to your competitors. So I think you know a CEM discussion really isn't about a strategy of CEM; it's about your strategy of company and listening to the customers. And certainly echo the comments of uh, of uh, my two colleagues here that commented before me. Okay. Uh, Sam, I think you always have an opinion on these things. Well, I, thanks. I, I think Kurt's right that it really is about changing the culture of the company, which really means changing the culture of every person in the business. And to change, it cause people to change, you have to be able to answer the famous WIFM question, W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me? And so by being able to go out and show the employees that by changing the way we deal with our customers, our customers are more successful, we become more successful, and that leads to all the good things that employees care about, job security, pay, and, and those kind of things. This becomes an enabler, and I think that's an important concept. Right, let's move on to our second panel question that everyone will have a chance to uh, respond to as well. What technologies and tools have been most useful in deriving actionable intelligence from the customer data you've collected? Um, and Kurt, let's, let's go right to you first on this one. Hmm. Um, the interesting thing here about the data is, you know, that um, data can be skewed to tell you whatever you want. And so, you know, the, the adage of, you know, liars figure, figures lie, it's interesting because um, if you're not careful, you can accumulate so much data that you start becoming data locked in the decisions. So I think, you know, the tools that we've used is really more along the lines of, how does our text analytics and um, the verbatims of our customers align with the data we gather and making sure that we have a true, true up spot that allows us to keep a parallel path. Um, and I think, you know, to, to somebody's comment earlier uh, in their discussion, this is an evolving process, especially around gathering information around customers because traditionally, 
you know, you would send out a survey, you would get a, a, um, a measurement back, and then you'd act upon that. And nowadays, there are so many opportunities to gain insight to customers, like the social networking, uh, the information that flows on the internet, the, uh, the conversations just in blogs. These are all now um, avenues for oppor opportunity to gather information about the customers. And so I think your tools have to evolve to gain those things. And certainly, your technology has to keep pace with gathering that. But again, the interesting thing here is the data you collect is only as good as your analytics around that. And uh, I think that's where a lot of companies start to stumble. So, Great. Uh, Jim, do you have any uh, thoughts on this? Yeah, I think Kurt makes yeah, a lot of really technologies. <laughs> Yeah, I think Kurt really is, uh, makes a great point about the data and, and the focus of the data and the analytics. And I think Ed summarized it really well, too, when he said, um, you know, the challenge for most corporations is how you gather that data and what you do with it. I think what we've learned in the last couple of years is, is all those challenges uh, that the peer group here has, has talked about are very real. And I think the one thing that, it, that we've learned out of all else is that if you don't have clear objectives of what you're going to do with the data internally and externally and how you're going to leverage it to improve the performance of the company you work within and your customers, um, it becomes almost unmanageable. And we actually reverse engineer it from the business objective back to the technologies and tools instead of developing the technologies and tools to derive the business outcome. So I think that's one major uh, lesson learned and, and hopefully will help help most people on the call. Great. Karen, how about some uh, observations from you on this? Yeah, uh, well really, again, what I would go back to say is, is that we have, we have been swamped with data um, from having very, a lot of systems right across the company and having many different CRMs and, and various other things. It has been overwhelming sometimes to sift through that. And what we did focus on is we did look at um, the capability to listen. So what are all the points uh, uh, or touch points where we can do those listening um, capabilities to draw in the information to get the sentiment, and then the verbatim. So those have been our true um, litmus of how we are going to sort of validate our data and use it and, and making sure we're getting close to the customers. And I think that helped us cut through the amount of systems that we do have, because we have many. But we, we did focus down on a few key systems over this last um, 18 months, and they have helped us solidify our strategy a little bit further uh, in this. And we do have some of our own analytic tools as well and our own products, so we've used those too. But I think I would go back to, to what um, both other speakers said, and it is very, very important to make sure you don't um, get swamped in that and just focus on um, the verbatims and the sentiments and that type of thing. Thank you, Karen. Uh, as we um, approach uh, our time limit, uh, we can get to a handful of, of submitted questions from attendees. And um, uh, Jim, I'm, I'm going to throw this one your, your way for starters. Uh, the question is, please provide an example of process change implemented at your company based solely on customer input or feedback. Sure. Um, that's actually a pretty easy one, believe it or not. Um, we had an issue, uh, customers I had identified um, that we were not doing particularly well in, in an area of deployment. And the area was the handoff um, to the customer of the environment that we just deployed and that same handoff to our internal support organization so that when customers called, we had a clear understanding of what, what technology was deployed at their site. And we actually changed the process by which we validated and communicated the completion of a project to a customer. And then also we built an internal system that developed a process by when the engagement was complete, the entire infrastructure information was downloaded to our support organization. Okay, good. Um, here's the next question. I'm going to ask Kurt to try this one on for size. The question is, which group was the biggest challenge in gaining enthusiastic support for your CM initiative? Was it senior management, or middle management, or individual lines of business, or was it rank and file employees? Which group was the toughest challenge to uh, get by in? Uh, um, you know, that's, that's a catch-22 question, I think, depending on who you're talking to. Um, you know, I, I don't think I don't think anybody um, has a challenge buying into a CEM process procedure, even a plan holistically. Um, I think the challenge comes from when it it actually 
implicates them in a change. And, and much like the, the conversation you just heard about process change, everybody's okay with adjustments and doing the things until it impacts their business. Um, and I think it's interesting to note, I'll, I'll liken it to um, getting everybody on an exercise program. You sit down and say, we all got to be healthy. Everybody says, yeah, we all agree. We shake our heads. And then you start to lay out the plan. And the first thing is we get up at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then you find out kind of who's in and who's out, right? Um, but it, it answers the direct question. I think, you know, if, if you start at the top and you have the leadership driving the change, the culture, the behavior, and they organize their structures in such a way that allows the employees and the middle management to make those decisions appropriately, and then you try to reward, everybody buys in, but it's got to start at the top. It can't be, you know, it can't be something that's not supported uh, in the long run, but um, I know it's probably an, an uh, ambiguity in the answer, but I do think it, it really does, you know, it, if it starts at the top, then it flows really well, and if it's tied to your compensation, it really sticks. So. Yeah, I think we'll, we have time for one more question, um, and this is going to be yours, Karen. Um, what are you doing to engage employees to enthusiastically embrace your CEM initiative? Well, going back to what, well, what has been said already, and Kurt mentioned it, about it being a culture, and we did actually start in one area, um, which was the support organization. Uh, and what we found was the best way to get employee engagement is to um, pilot something or to uh, start in small groups. And really to try and get momentum then is to, uh, you know, magnify that success of that small group. And that's pretty much what we did. We uh, worked at project level with uh, grassroots projects and involved some employees. And we started to get some success on, on the engagement that they were having. And when they started to understand the why and what, what was in it for them, um, we, we took that success and then rolled it out a little bit further. And then we found that very quickly it had a... Um, a rapid fire, you know, sort of situation where people got the idea of it and it spread without us actually doing it. Um, so, so that's kind of one of the things that we did to try and get employee engagement. Got it, Karen. Well, uh, folks, we're pretty much out of time right now. I want to thank you all for your participation, and I sincerely apologize for the audio problems that we had uh, in the first say, third of our of our broadcast. We did uh, hopefully get every speaker's presentation in. We had to redo Kurt. I hope that was all that, that was missed. Uh, again, we will do our best to clean up this uh, recording and send a clean copy out to everybody. Uh, and uh, you can see that our speakers uh, are more than happy to uh, invite questions, uh, specific questions to them. Their email and phone numbers uh, are included on this slide. Uh, and uh, again, thank you very much for your participation. You will be receiving uh, the, uh, the CEM DNA Playbook Toolkit by, by mail. And as we wrap up, any questions you have about uh, the Omega CEM DNA Playbook strategy itself or other topics on this webcast, please use my information to, uh, uh, to let me know what I can help you out with. And I also want to remind you that our next Building Customers for Life webcast will be on July 31st, and uh, we'll explore the, the, um, the role Played by competitive analytics and business intelligence. The second question, the panel question that we asked, we know there's a lot more uh, interest in that topic. So I think with that, I will thank you all again for your participation. Thank our terrific speakers for doing such a great job with their material and answering questions. So um, good luck to all of us in making customer delight part of our corporate cultures, and we look forward to seeing everybody on July 31st. Thank you very much.